Well, Abby's here with me today to help demonstrate this idea of combustion of isopropyl alcohol. And what I want to look at, Abby, is just some different factors that can affect how alcohol or any flammable liquid, for that matter, will burn. So what I'll have you do, just measure us out. I've got you some alcohol in the bottle there. Just measure us out about 15 milliliters of that, and let's pour it in our evaporating dish. Now, we know alcohol is a flammable liquid, right, Abby? Yep. But when we burn a flammable liquid like alcohol, the liquid in the evaporating dish doesn't all burn at once. What's actually burning is it? The gas. The gas, right? And we've talked about that in class, how as it evaporates, it releases that flammable gas into the air. And when I light this, we see the alcohol burning a little bit, but as we say, it doesn't burn up at once. It just kind of, as the gas evaporates off that kind of top layer, it burns. Then a little bit more comes up, it burns, and this little bit of alcohol that we had there will burn for several minutes if we let it. So we saw how the alcohol in the dish burned, kind of slow, sort of uninteresting, but it is a source of fire, right? But one of the factors that I guess we could say limits how quickly it burns is the surface area of the alcohol. You know, we had a fairly small surface because it's all in that little dish. Now, Abby, you've got another 15 milliliters there. Just dump that out across that tile for us. So now, is it fair to say we've got a bigger surface area? Uh, yes. So yeah. would you expect it to maybe evaporate more and give us a bigger fire? Yeah. We would think so, right? So I'll tell you what, take a step back here for us. And we're going to light that. And just like we expected, we've got a big fire. But what you'll notice about this fire is it's going to burn out very quickly because of that large surface. It's burning the alcohol, same amount of alcohol, making a bigger fire, but burning more rapidly. Well, Abby, we've looked at how this idea of surface area will affect how quickly it burns, how big it burns. But something else that affects the fire, we said a fire needs fuel, a fire needs heat, and a fire needs one other thing. What was that other thing? Oxygen. Lots of oxygen, right? And the more oxygen a fire gets, the more efficiently the fuel can burn. So we're going to do an interesting little chemical reaction to demonstrate that. And what we've got, we've got a chemical that's going to contain lots of extra oxygen. That's hydrogen peroxide. And Abby, if you'll just add a little bit of peroxide there to our evaporating dish and then we'll pour the alcohol on top of that. Okay, that's probably enough. And now we carefully want to pour the alcohol on top of that. It's a little less dense, so it'll float on top. So go ahead and add the alcohol to that as well. And just get it down real close and pour it slowly. There you go. So what we have now, we have our alcohol floating on top of the hydrogen peroxide. Now the hydrogen peroxide is not actually going to release that extra oxygen until a chemical reaction takes place. So for that, we're going to use an oxidizer called potassium permanganate. As the fire is burning, we're going to add that. That's going to release lots of bubbles of oxygen. And we'll see as those oxygen bubbles feed into the fire, the effect it has on the burning alcohol. All right, let's go ahead and light this, and let's see what happens as we add oxygen to our fire while it's burning. Now, you see right now it's just burning about like it normally did the first time with the alcohol in the evaporating dish. But when I add this peroxide, or rather when I add the potassium permanganate to the peroxide, just kind of be ready to step back a little bit. Um, some things might pop out of here. It. It's pretty, pretty vigorous reaction that takes place. So are we ready to add the pro uh, potassium permanganate in three, two, one? So that was pretty interesting, right? Yeah. Definitely, you know, a lot more reaction taking place there with the fire, the fire burning a lot more quickly. And every time you heard one of those pop, that's more bubbles of oxygen coming up out of that peroxide being released being used to help fuel that fire, helping it burn not only bigger, brighter, hotter, uh, also making those loud pops that we heard. So a pretty cool chemical reaction there using an oxidizer to make a fire burn bigger, brighter, and in this case, louder. 